Okay, hey guys, it's Lauren. Um, so I deleted all my social media and made this website. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why you should make a website too. Okay, so I anticipate this to be kind of a longer video. So I made an outline. So this chapter one is why delete social media? Like why? Then chapter two is why we don't delete social media despite these reasons to delete social media and why what was holding me back from deleting social media and then how i overcame these fears and finally deleted social media and third chapter is why a website rather than anything else is the best replacement for social media and then chapter four is my website tour and then new new contact methods since I deleted all of them um, and then conclusion and then limitations to this video so please skip to the part that sounds the most interesting since it's going to be long but let's get started so why delete social media so first of all this video is not going to center around why because the conversation around why you should delete social media in the first place has already been covered extensively and you can find any other video that explains the negative effects of social media. But let me just summarize them really quickly for you guys. So the first one is negative effect on mental health. This has been researched and particularly I have an article with quote, excessive and increased use of social media, particularly among those who are vulnerable is correlated with depression and other mental health disorders. And then these two reasons are, per, are specifically why I wanted to delete social media, which is substitute for real life experiences and then wasting time and addictiveness, falling to the addictive clutches of social media. And if you want to learn more about, you know, why you should delete social media, I highly recommend Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. Chapter two. What prevented me from deleting social media? And this has also been kind of covered a lot, especially the reason of FOMO, which is why a lot of people are held back from deleting social media. You know, fear of missing out on events, on people's lives, on, you know, whatever is going on in there. <laughs> But there, there's three avenues where I want to expand FOMO to that I haven't really seen talked about as much. So first of all, fear of missing out. And then this can be expanded to fear of losing people. I'm going to provide a personal testimony to further emphasize this point. I, as a, gen, a member of Gen Z, even though I wasn't born into social media like how Gen Alpha is, it was still an integral part of my social life growing up because I had access to it since I was 12 years old, which is way too young in my opinion. But it means that during my childhood years, it played a very important role in my life. So it's like all of my connections ever since I was little are captured in social media and that's the only place where I have some of these connections. So that was a fear for me when it came to making the choice to delete social media. And let me further demonstrate this fear by providing my personal backstory. Yeah, I'm providing my backstory, guys. But I've um, moved twice in my life to different states. And I don't mean states as in like states of matter, like solid liquid gas. I'm talking about the United States of America, like the country, right? So I was born in New Jersey and then I moved to North Carolina when I was 13. And then I moved again to Arizona when I was 16. So it's like all of my connections I've ever had since like in all of these communities are only captured through social media for me. And I'm sure if you've moved, you'll relate, but it's like a pretty jarring experience to move as a child because it's like everyone you've ever known in your life is like gone. 
Everyone in my New Jersey schools, my North Carolina schools, are captured only through social media. That's a main thing that kind of kept me from making this decision to delete social media cleanly out of my life. But moving on to this side, how I overcame this fear is first of all, practicing non-attachment. And this is prevalent in a lot of different schools of thought, most prominently in Buddhism. And non-attachment is saying that you should not cling to things that don't involve your life anymore and that cause unnecessary suffering. So my problem was by holding on to these social media connections, like carefully curated portrayals of these people's lives that I'm attaching to, which is not you know, good for me because it is, it is like bringing my past into my present too much even though all of the things, like the moving things already happened I'm kind of bringing these people in my life even though I'm not actually keeping in touch with them directly because I keep in touch with like two people <laughs> from my high school but yeah, it's like you really have to ask yourself what are you still holding on to? Like, what people are you still holding on to? And yeah, it is hard to overcome because it feels like I lost so many people in my life, right? And it feels like by deleting my social media, I'm losing them more in a way, but I'm actually gaining the gift of presence and being fully engaged in my Arizona community. So you're not losing anything. <laughs> And okay, I got a little bit passionate about this <laughs> concept of loss. So I'm going to talk about Eternal Recurrence by Friedrich Nietzsche. And disclaimer, I'm not a Nietzsche fan. I just particularly like this concept a lot. And Eternal Recurrence is the idea that your life it was, is on a constant loop and it will repeat itself until the end of time. All of the events in your life will endlessly keep happening the same exact way. And this is particularly um, a good like mindset to have if you're going through loss. It's hard to let go of people, you know? It's just who we are as humans because we, when we lose very strong social bonds, it feels like or literally in danger because it meant that we weren't able to survive. It is really painful, but this concept kind of helps me understand that, you know, no matter what I feel like I've lost, life has a way of repeating itself and I will always gain back the love that I feel like I've lost or like the friendships I think I've lost. It always has a way of returning to you. And I like to think that no matter who you feel like you've lost, you'll always meet them again. You'll meet everyone again, okay? And this concept also is important to keep in mind when living because it's like, if it were true that life is on an endless loop, right? Wouldn't you want to spend most of your time being in the present, engaged in your current in-person community rather than um, being so focused on your past communities and clinging on to them by a fiber of a thread. What kind of life would you rather live again and again? You know, a life that's whole, it's present in every moment, or a life that's fragmented because it's thinking about the past or the future or whatever, like the way social media does it, like, it like launches you out of the present. So yeah, that's how you can overcome this fear of losing people, which, which comes with um, deleting social media. Next is fear of losing memories. This is a shorter one. This kind of goes back to the point I was saying before, since I've had social media since I was 12 years old and I'm 20 now, that's eight years of my life that's logged on social media. You can see me growing up through social media, through my posts, like through me commenting on other people's posts. So I'm like, it's, for me, social media is quite literally a time capsule, right? And deleting it would mean getting rid of this time capsule, this valuable piece of information I have when understanding myself more fully, right? But this is an easy, 
easy fix, right? Just save everything you ha everything you posted, everything you saved or commented or all your tag posts. Just take a day to screen record everything. And then after you delete social media, find other ways to capture these memories. Whether it's through making YouTube videos or journaling about com in-person conversations you've had with friends or having more text conversations or calling people more and then writing about what you talked about. Just like, don't rely on social media anymore to capture your memories. Lastly, this is kind of specific to artists out there, is fear of losing inspiration. Because for me, Instagram particularly is so filled with unique art and artists that I've never seen in my life. And I like scrolling through it to get inspiration sometimes. So I was like, if I delete this, like my social media, then I would lose like a, a major source of inspiration, right? But are we like over consuming inspiration from social media? I think we are. Because of how social media apps are designed to keep us on their sites for a long time, right? Because of the way it's set up, it means that we're on there looking at inspiration for way longer than we spend actually creating art and it's just like an inspiration overload so none of them really stick and we're not even like we're not even like getting the proper time to reflect on them and actually incorporate them into our art so i think it's just not an effective way of gaining inspiration in my opinion the second way you can combat this is getting a lot of inspiration from social media um preventing you from creating your own ideas you know what i mean because you could get like an amazing idea for your art on social media but you're also taking away from the time that you would have spent uh, by yourself with your own thoughts being bored and then coming up with these ideas by yourself and i know what you're saying you're like yeah but there's no such thing as an original idea okay well yeah there isn't at this point in human history but it's the creative process, it's like the rewarding effect of sitting still and then coming up with it on your own. Like, I feel like we're losing that when we're getting all our ideas from other people. It's like when you were a kid, right? You were in the playground and you had so many ideas of your own. You came up with, you know, creating potions with leaves or like playing playing store by selling the wood chips. You know, you had all these ideas that you came up with on your own. And, but over relying on social media to give you inspiration is the equivalent of a teacher handing you a sheet of paper that has all the things that you can do at the playground. Like the teacher wrote out, oh, you can make a potion with these leaves. And then, and then like you can play store with these wood chips. And then the kids, only taking like inspiration from that sheet of paper so yeah it's eliminating the ideas that you would have gained when if you didn't spend so much time on social media and that concludes this chapter chapter three why a website why a website and not any other medium right so number one is complete creative freedom with social media you are restricted creatively okay do you see this instagram lay okay i got too lazy to color by the way but do you see this instagram layout how it is forcing your pictures to be displayed into squares and your high your highlights into circles like that's crazy like you, your artwork should not be constrained of the within these limits okay art is limitless but with the, like look it forces your post to be four to five aspect ratio and 1.91 to one aspect ratio like that's so crazy you should not have to conform to these made up rules okay so complete creative freedom you get to control everything about how you want to display the things you want to display on your website that, isn't that cool? You don't need to follow these rules. <laughs> but, okay, number two. It's a long-term project. And 
Let me provide an anecdote to highlight this one point. On the last day of my study abroad program, I asked all my friends, so like, what do you think the meaning of life is, right? And one answer stood out to me a lot. One of my friends was like, the meaning of life is to always be working on some kind of great project to, in order to contribute to the greatest project of life. And yeah, that's so true because, and then you can like use your website as one of your long-term projects because oh, making a website is a lifelong process, okay? It takes a long time to have, make your website exactly the way you want it. And in the process, you can also learn some cool skills like how to code through HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And I know what you're saying, you're like, Lauren, I don't want to learn how to code. Okay, you don't need to learn how to code. Um, I feel like I'm gonna trigger some engineers when I'm, by what I'm about to say right now. But you can just ask ChatGPT like the way I did to make my website so far. But okay, I understand what you're saying. You're like, okay, but you, shouldn't you try to learn a new skill of coding while you're you know, making a website in the first place? You know, I would agree with you, okay? But the... The only time I'm going to apply these skills that I learn is to make my own website and that's like one website. So I don't know if I want to undergo like learning coding just for my one website, but but still I think even if you do use ChatGPT, it's still a lifelong long-term project that you get to work on and make exactly the way you want it. And this is just like one of your mini projects to contribute to your magnum opus of life. Just like how everything in your life is like a long-term, lifelong mini project for your life. Like the project of friendships. <laughs> okay, and now why? Okay, third point. Oh wait, my camera's dying, one second. Okay, third point is why do you create, okay? This is particularly to artists. I feel like social media has very much contorted the reasons for why we create in the first place. The translation of your artwork into the social media platforms I think really distorts the way your creative process is. You're putting this piece of work that you put your entire soul into, into just like a game of social validation. And your hard work, your hard, the soul that went into creating your artwork is becoming quantified with the amount of likes, with the amount of comments. That's so crazy, like it should not be like that. And by making a website being free of any kind of social validation, because, you know, there's no, I mean, unless you create it, of course, there's no like or comment feature on your website. So it's more about yourself and it's reminding me of, reminding you of, or me and you, me and you about why we're artists in the first place, okay? It was never about the social validation. It was mostly about us. It's mostly about the urge of artists to create something with our bare hands create something out of thin air, creating, taking some kind of matter and then transforming it into a piece of matter that looks completely different. It was about that for us, okay? It was never about the social validation, okay? And let me reference Digital Minimalism, the book I was talking about before. So I read, I remember reading this a while back and in this book, um, Cal Newport provides personal testimonies from people who have undergone the digital min digitally minimalist digital minimizing process and one stuck out to me the example he provided was of this person who is an artist who deleted most of his social media except Instagram because he saw it as a good way to um, keep track of his artwork and when I read that, I was like, 
okay, see, like I don't need to delete Instagram. Like I want to share my artwork because as artists, even though the main reason for why we create it should be ourselves, we still want to share it with at least one person. So I was like, okay, see, like it's a way for me to share my art. But to this, I argue this, um, this book was published in 2019, right? And that was before reels were a thing, before Instagram found new ways to trap us into their sight, right? So I think because this book is a little dated and it's before reels, we should take into consideration that when it was published, Instagram didn't have the exact addictive qualities that it does now. So we need to take that into consideration as well when we're considering if Instagram is the best choice for us. And so yeah, that's why a website is so great because it feels like I'm sharing my artwork, except it lacks the social validation. So it makes it more about me, but yet I still feel like I'm putting it out into the world. So that concludes this chapter, why, why a website? And now I'm going to give you guys a website tour. <laughs> Just, okay, disclaimer though, my website is nowhere near done, near done, like, there's so much stuff I want to do with my website, it's like, I think you guys better, you guys better check in in five years to see, like, my completed website, <laughs> but I'll show you guys anyway, because I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> so, okay, this is my website. <laughs> This is so close to the camera. Okay, so this is my website, right? It's at, it's lrnjulie.com. And I made this website on Ghost, by the way. This is my homepage. I just have like my channel banner. And then in my about section, I have this other picture that's like kind of cool because it's like scrapbooky. And then, <laughs> um, it just says like my introduction, then more in important information about myself, such as my sign, MBTI, blood type, Harry Potter house, and Warriors Cats Clan, and then photos. Okay, this is this section is very like in progress right now, but okay, I have these ten photos, which are some of my favorite photos I've ever taken in my life, especially this one. <laughs> Oh, by the way, my friends uh, went on my website and he said that like the highlights thing looks weird, like it, it overlaps with these buttons. So let me know. Go visit my website and let me know if it looks bad. Oh, if it does, I don't know what to do because I only have access to my own screen. But anyways, now moving on to art. It's just like some art pieces that I really like that I made. And then I just say the title and the medium. I don't have a lot on there right now, but I'm excited to create more. And then writing. Okay, I'm okay with sharing like all my other <laughs> art, like works of art, but like when it comes to sharing my writing, I just feel so uncomfortable. I know it's like a writer thing though. Like we're just like, we cringe at our writing. But honestly, I, I put these on here because I, genuinely really like these poems I wrote and I hope you like them too but <laughs> and it's also helping me practice sharing my writing more because you know as writers I think ooh, like all writers need to practice sharing their writing more because it like I don't know what it is about writing like our own writing it just like scares us like it makes us uncomfortable but I need to face discomfort okay so that's my website tour. Please keep an eye out in the next for the next five years when I finish my website. Okay, now new connection methods. So I deleted everything. So you guys are probably like, Lauren, like, where are we supposed to connect with you? And okay, I did think about this because I still want to talk to you guys because like you guys are so cool. And if you have a question or like if you're struggling with anything, I want you guys to feel free to talk to me. The solution to this is I want I really want to make a Discord server soon so we can like help each other out and stuff. 
and you guys can talk to other humans. <laughs> but the problem with that is I tried to make a server and it was so confusing. So I was like, oh, I don't know how to work this. So, okay. So my Discord server is coming soon. I just have to figure out how to make it. But in the meantime, I have Pinterest and Pinterest has a direct message feature and you can ask me questions if you have any. Oh, I'll try to respond when I have time because like I want to help you guys out with anything you might be struggling with. I mean, I don't have all the answers yet, but I'll try. So those are the two communication methods I have so far. But okay, lastly, conclusion and limitations. First thing to talk about limitations of this video is first limitation is I'm not a full-time artist. Art is a hobby for me and I have no experience of being dependent monetarily on social media. So that's one limitation. The second limitation is I have a YouTube channel so I have the ability to promote my website through my my YouTube channel. Um, in order to feel like I'm still sharing my art with at least one person. So I guess the solution is like make a YouTube channel and a website, I guess. But third limitation is my frontal cortex is not fully developed yet. So check back with me in five years to hear advice from a person with a fully developed brain. And the, okay, now conclusion is you should visit my website and you should make a website and you should consider deleting social media if um, you are related to the things I said in this video. Okay, bye. <laughs>